Welcome to this new tutorial on uh, 3D viewing in Kancha, the Geometallurgy software. Uh, today we're going to be looking at how we use the 3D viewer part of Kancha to, to view 3D information uh, and analyze uh, geometallurgical data. We're going to be using this uh, Sergio Valaris uh, data set. This was kindly supplied by Simon Mortimer. Simon uh, constructed this from scratch. Uh, basically, it, it, it's a fake deposit. Uh, so, so without further ado, let's look at this data tables. We've got uh, a block model. Um, we've got a bunch of uh, drill hole uh, data from assays, lithology, mineralogy, collars, and surveys. We've got some comminution results uh, from comminution test work, some geological characteristics of those samples, and some head assays, mineralogy, and the origin of each of those samples, and some lithology with some uh, some faults, uh, basically 3D uh, DXF uh, surfaces. Uh, we're making this data available uh, via the uh, via the user support uh, section, so. Uh, if you want to use this data for testing uh, Kancha, uh, just let us know and we'll give you the link. Let's go to the 3D area here. So in 3D, we can see that uh, we, you know, we've got uh, the feature window here on the left. It's got the drilling uh, tables, the block model tables, and the metallurgical tables. Now they're always in this order here on the left. If I click on the drilling, for example, for the assays, then the other tree uh, parts of the tree will collapse, and then we'll be able to click on, for example, uh, uh, the, the copper head grade, uh, hot copper drilling grade. Uh, maybe in the block model we want to. Uh, well, we only have one field, only have the copper total. Uh, so it's showing now. Maybe we don't like the color. We can right click and, and change the color to something else. Let's make it a nice orange color. For copper, hit, hit apply, it'll change our, our color there. When we go back to 3D, now our 3D model uh, is orange. Okay, great. Uh, the legend's changed now. So we on the right hand side here, we've got the legend and we've got the 3D controls window. Um, not to be confused, both of them have got drilling, block model, and samples. The legend window is just that, it's just a legend. The 3D controls is actually for controlling what's going on in the view, okay? Another way you can look at legend is by clicking this legend button here, and it'll come up with this floating legend. This one isn't interactive, this one is. So if here, for example, I want to turn off the low grade on the block model, I can just click on here, it takes a second to refresh, and now we can see that the, the low grade isn't being shown. So. We can do the same for uh, you know for any any of these ones. Uh, so there's a there's that legend there. We can put that wherever we want it. And if we take a screen capture of this using these buttons here, then we'll have this legend included. If we've got it turned off, you won't have a legend when you do the, the screen capture. You can always right click here and copy the legend to clipboard, and it'll do that. You can also show the limits. Uh, it depends on. You know, if you like the legibility, you can you can hide the names, you can hide the show the limits, show the names, whatever you want to do. So there's your legends. This could float out around, okay. So you can put this on another screen if you want. You could put it on, uh, you know, you could put it on the bottom. You could put it uh, over here. It would be covering everything up. But you wouldn't want to do that. But you could do it. Um, you could also have a dock on top of these others by basically when you move it around. Wherever it goes blue, you can you can dock it. So you can dock it above or below, or to the right or the left. I like to put it over here. I like to keep it on top and 3D controls on the bottom. Okay. So let's look again at these radio buttons. So here in the legend, it just turns things on and off. Okay. Down here, uh, if I click on the radio button, it's got three states. It's turned it off, but also it's got ghost okay so it makes it transparent okay so maybe not so interesting just now for this block model let's turn that back on again 
But for example, if, if I was to turn off uh, the block model and then look at these uh, shells, so 3D fault surfaces, if I'm trying to see something, oh look, this is great. All I can see is a whole bunch of gray. That's not very useful to me. Let's make it a ghost. So we make these surfaces ghosts. Now we can see through them. We can still see where they are. So you can, you know, you can have a lot better time with that. Okay. So that's uh, that's how those buttons work. And at the top, I want to turn all the shells on or all the shells off. I can do that as well. Okay. Let's turn the shells off. Now the uh, metallurgical sample is a little bit different. This little green, tri uh, green, uh, orange triangle. This is the uh, metallurgical samples. Um, in this case, we're showing the abrasion index. That's from here, from the metallurgical results. We could also change that to the bond work index, for example, or the SMC results, uh, SG. Let's look at the bond work indices, okay? So right now, we've got it turned on the circle. We could also turn it on the cylinder, and we'd actually see the lengths of each sample respecting the, the actual length along a drill hole. And we can change the diameter. By default, it's just only a bit bigger than the drill hole. But you can see that's a bit spotty, and if you're going to cut and paste that into a report, or you're going to copy the copy it here, and then uh, and then paste that into a Word document or a PowerPoint, not very spectacular. People aren't going to appreciate it. So make it bigger. Okay? And now it's a lot more illustrative. Problem is, if you're looking at it from the side, they get small again. So that's a bit of a pain. So turn them into spheres. Now it doesn't matter which way you look at them, you can see them all just the same. So that's kind of interesting, you know, that's a nice way to look at uh, sparse metallurgical data. When it comes to drill holes, um, I've just got these filters just now, let me turn the filters off. Um, so when you've got the drill holes, you can see that, oh look at this, you know, you've got uh, some drilling data here, this is obviously the copper grade. And you can see a high grade vein going straight through the middle. But also we can look at other things. You could look at, for example, lithology. And bang, look at the lithology here. So it's going from numerical data to categorical data. And you can see that the you know you get the names of them here. If for example you say, well, hang on, there's a lot of different lithologies there, it's very hard for me to get my head around that. Maybe we could make it easier. So you could right click here on lithology. And so, well, let's just group together the, you know, the volcanics and the sedimentary stuff or something like that. I, you know, apologies to the geologists as I'm getting this wrong. Uh, but maybe, you know, let's just put these, uh, so just rearrange them. And you can see that when, it, when you group them together, we've now got them grouped like this. And we could change, you know, you could pull them out of the group if we wanted or put them back into the group. That's fine. But now they've got kind of silly names because they only took the name from the first one. So let's just change that. Just go volcan volcanic sedimentary. And let's just call this mixed. Okay. And apply. And now we go back to 3D. We'll have a simplified color scheme. And you can see we've only got green, blue, and orange. And when I turn off the orange, we'll only see the green and the blue. And if we turn off green, we'll only see the blue. Okay, so maybe you want to you know, play with that sort of thing. You can do that. Okay. Uh, Alright, so what else can we do with the drill holes? We could put on the collars. The collars are where the drill was taken from. And you can see these are all the drill collars, these little blue pyramids that shine in the daylight. So that can be useful to know where those drill collars are. And even more useful if we put a label on them. So here we can see that we've got uh, all the drill hole names for all these. And it might look like a bit of a mess. No point in putting that on a PowerPoint presentation. Nobody will ever read it. Um, but if, for example, you were to say, okay, uh, you know, uh, show me 
this sample, uh, sorry, this drill hole. So you just go to the drill holes window and click on it, and you can see it all of a sudden makes a lot better sense. Um, you can see them like that. Okay. Um, another way you can navigate, obviously, is by this plan view here of the drill holes, and you can click on the dots and it'll take you around. Same thing works for the MET samples. You can click on the MET samples and then be labeled. You can see where you're from. Very good. Now then, let's look again at this block model. We'll turn off the uh, turn off the drilling and go back into the block model. And we can see we've got these colored, uh, it's, it's all colored here according to copper. Yeah. The copper grades here, so we've got the, the distribution curve, cumulative distribution. We've got a box plot here. So most of the values are down here, less than 1%. The average and the mean. And these bands of color for low grade, medium grade, and high grade. That's good. I mean, you know, and this will keep the same color in all the graphs and in the strip logs and everything else. But maybe to visualize it better, maybe we might want to use, for example, something like a rainbow which I know is very popular. But in fact, it's actually a bit misleading. The, the red can be a bit misleading uh, and can, can draw the eye too much. And it can be a little bit, uh, uh, I can say, misleading. Uh, so Viridis is actually a better color scheme uh, where yellow is low and, and dark blue is, is strong. Um, so this is actually a very good color scheme to get a good uh, evenly weighted uh, perceptual uh, understanding of, of intensities. Um, the scales here, of course. This is divergent, so red values are high and, and blue values are low. This is magma. Uh, it's kind of like Veritas, but it's just got, uh, goes from blue to, to yellow through uh, red and purple and whatnot. Um, and my Recently, I've been using this one a bit. This is a grayscale one. And I think, well, Adam, but you've got such beautiful colors. Why would you put just gray on there? Well, let me show you. Because maybe we're going to do a section through the middle here. Maybe I'll just rotate this section around, make it parallel to the parallel to the east. So we've got this, I uh, want to draw a section through the middle here. Um, uh, and so, just click on this button here down in the section properties. We'll make it a let's make it a 200 meter wide section. So now these two planes, the control plane and the reference plane, are 200 meters apart. I could rotate them this way, for example, to make them look look west. Okay, so we have a west looking uh, section now. And uh, anyway, I hit this button here. Click. It'll take me to that. Now, not that interesting by itself, but if I start to put drilling on top and I start to put some metallurgical samples on top, you can see that it stands out against the gray on the background. If I put something like magma, for example, it just turns into a, a hot mess of colors. So it's kind of nice to have this grayscale uh, to show block model colors and then other colors on top. You decide, you're the chef you can cook with as much salt as you'd like. What's happening here? We've got a, a section through the middle. You can see that the, the on the control plane, that's where we're drawing the block model. And then inside that 200 meter width, we've also got whatever MET samples and whatever drilling is in there. If I was to turn on the shells, then it would also be whatever shells we've got in the same plane as well. And so, if I just hit that button there, it'll take me to the section view looking normally at that, at the, at perpendicular to the plane. And you can see that's a, a nice way to, to view uh, the, uh, a section view. I could bring up my legend, put that in the corner, you know, and, and, and then all of a sudden I've got a, a nice, uh, nice image to put into my report. Everybody would be very impressed. Um, what else have we got? 
So we need to step through the sections, okay? So if I hit step, okay, what's going to happen is moving 100 meters each time. As we're already looking at 200 meters each time, let's step at 200 meters as well. We're just stepping through. As you can imagine, as what we've done is we've just stepped. We're just stepping through the deposit, as you can see like that. Okay, you can see exactly where we are because in this box here you can see the east, northern, and RL in the middle of the plane that we're looking at. The azimuth is whatever which way we got the plane turned around. We can change that any way we want it, and the plunge is always zero. We've got it configured so the plane's always vertical, just for user uh, ease. Uh, if you want to have crazy sections looking down through angles or from the top down and stuff like that. Uh, you can get away with some of that on the on this uh, slider tool. Uh, you can you, you can use slider tool for some of that, but otherwise, uh, I recommend that uh, you just keep the sections vertical. Uh, Ninety percent of the cases is quite good enough. Maybe you want to label and metallurgical samples. Maybe you want to you know change the the color scheme, make it viridus there, and, and make them. Uh, you know, so we can we can change these sort of things and, and, and get a nice image. By the way, you know, the resolution is not fantastic uh, and maybe you want to have something for a higher resolution print, maybe for a, a, a brochure or maybe for a, a, a big poster or something like that. And so what you can do is you can hit this HD. So this one here, this is just to copy the view the way it is with, you know, regular resolution of the computer screen, which is good for PowerPoint, for example. Uh, good enough really for Word as well, uh, or Excel, but if you if you wanted to do something for high resolution, you can just click on this 4K one, and it'll give you a very high resolution capture of the same thing. Uh, nice to have. Um, okay, so that's, uh, that's sections. Let's turn that off. I was mentioning before about these sliders, so just click on the sliders, and basically it gives you perpendicular planes, three of them, one of them the northing and easting and the, and the RL. And you can just move them up and down using these sliders here. That's why we call it sliders. Uh, give it a more interesting color scheme, a lot more dramatic, bang. Uh, and maybe we want to put on the metallurgical samples and look at that. So now you can have a much better look at the context there. And because you can move it in real time, you can sort of see where, where your uh, samples are in respect to uh, different or grades or lithologies or whatever you happen to have populated in the block model. Um, so that's sliders. Up here we've got uh, ISO surfaces, right? So basically what it's doing is it's just taking away all the blocks that have got a grade lower than what we've got here. So if we want to see only stuff with, uh, you know, greater than 2% copper, so we just put two in here, and you can see here, ISO surface copper two percent, and these are all the blocks we've got with two percent or more. Okay. So there's the that's the ISO surface. These buttons here. These basically show you the north, the plan, and the west view. Okay. Um, this one gives you an isometric view, and this one gives you a favorite view. Now it's up to you to decide what your favorite view is. Um, I'm not going to tell you what you should have, but it's the favorite view is what we use for things like cover pages and icons and thumbnails and cancha. So it's kind of nice to have uh, a view that you think is emblematic and, and a sort of point of view, uh, perspective that you think is most interesting of, uh, of your deposit. And you just right click, set favorite view. And then if you're going somewhere else, you just hit favorite view. That, that'll be the, the view that you get uh, for things like your, your uh, report cover page, okay. Measurement measurements are all perpendicular. Sorry, to the uh, they're all in the plane. They're in parallel to the camera lens, uh, perpendicular to the line of sight. So you want to have things lined up right. If you measure this point, here we go. If you measure this point to this point, and it's off on an angle, it'll say. You know, for example, 1,752. But if I line it up parallel to the camera, by, maybe by clicking on one of these ones, and if I measure it when it's in the right 
the Z plane, I can see that it's 2,000 meters, okay? So be, be careful you're doing measurements. You've got to make sure that you're, uh, the things you're lining up are perpendicular to the uh, line of sight. Captions. So maybe I want to build a house here at the cross. That would be a good place to build a house. So let's just put my house, okay? And we can see here now, we, let's just uh, make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. That's going on here. What have we got turned on? Up? Sorry, I had ISO services still turned on. So uh, I want my house to be at this cross here. So all I do is I hit the anchor button and I move it around and I can put it on there. But you can see when I turn it around, oh, I thought it was there, but actually it was below. So the right way to do this is to look north first and move it there and then go ahead and look west and then move it there. And now you can turn off the anchor and you can see no matter where I'm looking from, it'll, it'll keep that single point there labeled and the label will always be on top of everything else. So, you know, you might want to, for example, uh, you know, say, for example, you want to say, you know, high grade zone, you know, so there you've got high grade zone. And when you're putting all stuff together or you're putting it together for, for a section or something like that, and you can turn those on and off just using that radio button there. Um, okay, this is a refresh button. You don't have to push it, probably shouldn't push it. But in the odd case that Kancha is not painting everything properly, you can go ahead and hit that. Sometimes if, for example, you've imported new data or you've uh, created a new derived function or something like a feature or something like that, uh, say you've done some crazy filter, maybe it didn't refresh and you're wondering whether it's been painted correctly, just hit the refresh button and it'll get it back for you. These buttons here are for reports. This'll, this one here will send all the reviews to report, okay? Let's see what that looks like. If I click on that, it's going to take a, a, you know, a few seconds and it's going to report a whole bunch of different views to the report window. So I've got the north view, the east view, and the top view. Whatever I was looking at, they're all sent off to there as one batch. Alternatively, I can just go ahead and send the current view. So I send the current view. It's the snapshot, and there it is. And you can see that it's loaded up here with, uh, right now I've got a fairly low resolution on the screen because uh, it's the best way for YouTube. But basically you've got here the, the legend and you've got, uh, you know, scales and stuff like that, a bit of information here in this one. Before you go, I forgot to mention bounds. Okay, so what's this first one here? This is bounds. It brings up this pink dot. And what you can do is you can pull this cube in and out in each of the eight different axes, or you can move the, the dots around. And as you can see, it sort of lines up that cube with whatever you want. So say you only want it to look at half the deposit, you could line it up to look at half. And say, I only want to look at this half, give me that half there. So you would sort of draw a box to encapsulate that. And if I was to hit bounds now, I'm only going to see half the deposit. Why is this useful? Well, sometimes, for example, you might have some drill holes that are way off. In this case, for example, if we look at the some of the 3D um, models, they might be quite a way away from the rest of the rest of the model. You can see they come a few hundred meters down, and that kind of throws things off. You know, it throws a scale for viewing and stuff like that. You don't want to have it coming down so low. So what I like to do is I hit this button here and what that does is it puts the bounding box around the block model. I could do the same for drilling. That would be the whole drilling database. This would be the uh, block model. So now when I hit this button again for bounds to come out of bounds, now I you can see that the axes are just exactly lined up 